Good.
Alleluia. Christ has risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as had any need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. When it was evening of the day of the resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was also called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Please be seated. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The four Gospels record, while each a little differently, the many, many events that happened on the day of our Lord's resurrection. And on this second Sunday of Easter, we always hear from the 20th chapter of John about the evening on that day. In fact, both John and Luke record what the disciples see during those particular visits from Jesus. So just what is it that convinced the disciples that Jesus is alive? Well, I suggest that it was not just his physical appearance, nor his familiar face, or even his calming voice with the words of peace. Rather, I think what convinced them was his scars. Now, we know precious little about a body restored to eternal life, brought to life but changed. Jesus is now glorified. The perishable has become imperishable. A body new enough that his friends don't recognize him at first. A body that can pass through doors and walls yet eats solid food. However, among the few details that we do have from the Gospel writers about the risen Jesus is this intriguing detail about the scars. Luke and John record Jesus inviting his disciples, see my hands and my feet. And by seeing them, each one of his friends will come to know, without a doubt, that their Lord is risen as he promised. Scars then are how Jesus affirms and identifies 
his resurrected self. Now, if the gospel writers had not told us about these scars, we might assume that a glorified, resurrected body wouldn't have any. If you are like me, I expect an upgrade. An upgrade from this perishable body to an imperishable one, which might mean that we would no longer bear the marks of suffering in this world. I am looking forward to regaining my 32-inch waist and a full head of wavy brown hair. But who knows? Yet here, we see that a scar-free resurrection is not part of God's plan. Charles Wesley sees love in Jesus' scars. Pending the words to my favorite Advent hymn that I make sure we always sing the first Sunday of Advent as we begin that season, lo, he comes with clouds descending. Wesley's third stanza says, those dear tokens of his passion still his dazzling body bears. Cause of endless exultation to his ransomed worshipers, with what rapture, with what rapture, with what rapture, gaze we on those glorious scars. So then the scars of Christ in his eternal glorified flesh have something to say. Jesus' scars tell us that he became fully human, that he was made like us in every respect, and that as one of us, he knows our human pain because he has suffered with us. Consider as well that scars come from healed wounds. Therefore, scars mean that life goes on be they from physical or mental or emotional experiences, if you have a scar, it means that you are a survivor. You have come to the other side of that encounter, and you are still living. The presence of scars then indicate that something which was broken is now changed, is now made stronger, said differently, Scars can be powerful signs and pathways for change. So perhaps we should not look upon scars as unsightly. We should never use that word when we are describing scars because if there is no healing, there are no scars. In 1944, during World War II, my uncle Ralph was a 19-year-old lieutenant in the U.S. Army 8th Air Force in Europe. At the young age of 19, he was a bombardier on a B-17 flying fortress called Cargo for Margo, and his crew was part of the 100th Bomb Group. You may recall that B-17 crews flew some of the most dangerous combat missions of that war. The survival rate averaged somewhere around 50%. And the bloody hundredth, as they came to be called, suffered more casualties than any of the bomb groups. Their story is being told in the current TV series, Masters of the Air. On the 17th of October in 1944, my young uncle was flying his 11th mission with the 100th. This raid was to cut off German rail supplies near the southern outskirts of Cologne, Germany. Several hours after leaving England, Lieutenant Farrell sighted the target, released his bombs as he had done time and time before. However, this time, the bomb rack mechanism on the B-17 failed during bombs away. Only 16 of the 100-pound bombs dropped clear, 
while 18 other bombs and incendiaries fell into a snarled heap and jammed in the bomb bay. And soon those bombs began arming themselves. As their plane left the formation and headed to the English Channel, my uncle, the radio operator, and the tail gunner climbed down into the bomb bay and began to dislodge and secure the threatening weapons. Yet, before they could finish the task, a bomb fuse exploded, critically wounding my uncle and injuring the other two airmen and damaging the plane. Amazingly, the 22-year-old pilot managed a landing at Thorpe Abbott's Field in eastern England seven hours after they had taken off with all of the crew and those remaining bombs on board. In addition to a severed artery, a damaged nerve, and shrapnel that lodged in my uncle's body on that fateful day, he also lost an eye. And this was the end of the war for him. However, while he received a Purple Heart and a presidential citation, my Uncle Ralph never considered himself disabled. As a matter of fact, his nickname was Sonny. Only 19, he still had a lot of living to do. He still had purpose. And once those wounds were healed to scars, he enjoyed 46 more years of life, dying of cancer at 65. And when his life was changed and not ended, as we proclaim in the funeral rite in the Episcopal Church, he carried all of those scars with him from the war to heaven. My friends, the eternal life that we receive through the resurrection of Christ does not erase the challenges of life as though they never happened. We carry the scars of our human suffering to heaven just as Christ does. And while the suffering and pain of this life will be over and healed, the scars that marked and shaped and identified us will remain, but glorified as we see on the Christ the King Chapel. That's because Jesus' scars as healed wounds forever tell us about the final victory that we are given in and through him, how his blood once shed through those visible scars has conquered sin and death forever. Then this is our scarred Savior who is both at the center of our faith and at the center of heaven with the Father and the Spirit. God memorialized for eternity the saving work that Christ did on the cross by glorifying and exalting the scars from his wounds that he received on the cross in his resurrected body. He was wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquities, and with his stripes, with his scars, we are healed. And so we forever celebrate Jesus with the beauty of his scars in view. Not a defect, but a glory, a glory beyond compare. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, who is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism. The prayers of the people. The Lord is risen. May we joyfully pray for the church, our bishops Michael and Douglas, and for all the ministries at St. Boniface that grace our community with loving kindness. We who are many are one body in Christ. For our nation, state, and community, and those leading them, that they may know God's loving embrace. The greatest among you must become like the one who serves. That God's inclusive love be known by people of all races, ethnicities, genders, and walks of life, leading to peace in our troubled world. Beloved, let us love one another. Because love is for God. For those whom Jesus loves that are suffering, for the hungry, the poor, those without homes, those mourning, and those who are sick. It's on our parish, parish prayer list. For those in our parish that are in the hospital or in rehab. Though I walk through the valley, you are with me in the for all those who have died and now know the promise of Christ's resurrection. For Barbara, the mother of Deacon Elisa, Death is conquered. We are free. Christ has won the victory. In the glory of Eastertide, we give thanks to the Lord for all those who celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. Sharon, Alan, Ron, Clyde, Mike, Joe, Joanne, Steve, Nancy, Rachel, Diane, Lisa, John, Katie and Peter, Jenny and Bill, Annie and Warren, Melissa and Jim. With all God's children, we sing hosannas to the one who is our salvation. For Christ is risen. The Lord, Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning. Good morning. It is wonderful to see all of you sitting in the pews. We also greet those of you streaming at home. 
At the conclusion of this service, we invite you to join us for coffee hour. Come on out these doors and take a left and head to the parish hall where we will join you for uh, refreshments and beverages. At this time, I would like to invite forward uh, from, Kate, uh, from also youth, uh, the outreach coordinator, Caitlin Bronk, who is going to tell us a little bit more about also youth and their programs. Thank you, Caitlin. Good morning, everyone. My name is Caitlin Brunk. I am the outreach coordinator for Also Youth. I am beyond honored and excited to be speaking here today on behalf of my organization. For those of you who may not have heard of us, the mission of Also Youth is to empower LGBTQ plus youth and their allies and create inclusive communities. Our vision is of all people living with dignity, honesty, and pride, regardless of their gender identity or sexual orientation. Our name reflects our core values. It's an acronym, in case you didn't know. It stands for advocacy, leadership, support, and outreach. Through your donations, past and present, our youth get to experience firsthand the love and support that this amazing community has to offer. Folks like you help ensure that our youth have free access to queer stories through things like your giving tree, stories that they can see themselves in and stories that they can relate to. This representation is not often found in mainstream media. Our program manager dedicates a fair amount of time to finding these books, and without donations like yours, we wouldn't be able to provide that access. On behalf of Also Youth, I'd like to say thank you Thank you for your donations. Thank for you for the time and opportunity to speak today. And thank you for your passion and your dedication to supporting our mission. If you would like to learn more about Also Youth, I will be hanging out at coffee hour and I would love to speak with each of you. Thank you. And as we well know, part of our strategic plan, one of the pillars is reaching out to marginalized family and youth, particularly the LGBT community. So please come to coffee hour and have an opportunity to speak with Caitlin. While you are over in the um, parish hall, take time to also visit uh, a table that is um, uh, enticing us all to a party on April 20th. We are going to have a aloha party in which we will be saying goodbye to our seasonal residents, and it's a potluck. So come on over to the table, sign up, and we'll look forward to that fellowship out on the courtyard on April 20th. Uh, please be attentive to the many announcements in our bulletin. We are resuming many of our ongoing ministries and classes, and also there are several musical events coming up. Uh, tonight, um, Key Corral will have a concert here. Uh, the orange tape you see in the middle of the crossing are marks that they're going to hit tonight. So come and see them. Uh, you can buy tickets at the door tonight, and then you will see concerts on Wednesday, April 17th, for the Sarasota uh, Piano Trio, and then um, on April uh, 13th, next Saturday, for Ring Sarasota. They also have a table outside that can give you more information about those opportunities. Um, and then next Sunday evening at 5 p.m., we will have our monthly even song and recital. Uh, this is another way we support youth in our community through the Young Artist Showcase. One of the award winners of that program will be playing the violin for us, and then Evensong will be sung. Uh, please come and join us for that wonderful worship opportunity. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. We send you forth bearing the gifts of God that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread, one cup. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and given us eternal life through the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord, bestow upon you healing, mercy, and grace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Spirit, Earth, eternal creator, sustainer, and um, <laughs> sanctifier, sanctifier, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. 